In the last video, we saw that although rain is a great source of water, it's unreliable. And farmers don't have much control on when or how much water to give their plants. So we saw that to make it more reliable, farmers depend on other sources of water like rivers, lakes, and ponds. Now, if you take any typical farm, it's located in such a way that it's close to at least one water body. You either have like rivers, lakes, or pond nearby, or if none of these are available, there is a well dug and the groundwater that is available in the farm is used for providing water to the plants. Now, in all of these cases, there are two steps involved to provide water to the plants. The first step is to just collect this water or draw water from this water source. Once that is done, the second step is to evenly distribute this water to all the plants in the farm. So the process of providing water to the plants by following these two steps is called irrigation. In this video, let's look at few methods that farmers use to achieve these two steps. The first method that we're going to see is called as the pulley system. Here you have a pulley that's attached on top of a well and a rope is wrapped on top of it. One end of the rope has a bucket that is dipped into the water. The other end is held by the farmer. So when they need water, they let the bucket go deep inside so it gets filled up with water and they just pull the other end up so that they can collect the water. Once they have the water out, they now need to distribute this to all the crops in the farm evenly. To do this, they have built a network of small channels. So these are built in such a way that once they pour water at one end of the channel, it automatically starts distributing and it reaches pretty much all the crops in the farm. So in this way, the farmers can now just pour water on one end and the water just uh, basically reaches all the crops. Now in all the other methods that we are going to see, this method of distribution actually remains the same. We're only going to look at different methods to draw water out of this water source. The second method that we are going to see is called as a dekli. This method is based on the principle of a fulcrum. Think of it like a seesaw. So what we have is this long rod. One end of that rod is connected to a rope, which is then connected to a bucket that dips into the water. The other, uh, the other end has some weight that helps the farmer. When they want to get some water out, they pull this other end of the rod and the bucket dips into the water, gets filled up, and when they let go, the weight helps pull the bucket back up. And now they have the water that they can pour into the channels. This helps them uh, put a little less uh, human effort because if you think of the pulley, it's, it's really hard to kind of pull bucket after bucket of water. Here they have this counterweight that is helping them a little bit more. This is also a good method when you have a shallow source of water. Think of like tanks or there is a lake or a pond nearby. The problem with these two methods, as you might have noticed, is that you can get only one bucket of water at a time. So it takes a long time. So folks started thinking, okay, what can we do so that we have a better, more steady stream of water? And that's how they came up with this method called as a chain pump. In chain pump, you have two wheels and a band that is wrapped around both the wheels. On top of this band is a series of buckets. One wheel is placed very close or rather within the water source. The other wheel is placed at the starting end of that channels. Now, when the wheel starts rotating, both the wheels start rotating together, the buckets start filling up. The buckets that are attached to the wheel, which is closer to the source, they start filling up. And as they kind of move up, they start dumping this water into the channels. So this way, we have a more steady stream of water coming in and it is able to irrigate that entire farm more quickly 
when compared to the previous methods of pulley or tegli. The next system that we'll look at is called as the Rahat system. In this, we have a large wheel and has a band wrapped around it. The band is, the band then has a series of buckets. This wheel is then connected through a gear to a pull. As the bull walks around, the wheel starts moving. Now, as the wheel moves, the one end of the band is immersed into the water source. So the buckets start filling up and as they come out, they bring up this water and dump it into the network of channels that are connected to the plants. In the systems that we have seen so far, we have either used human or animal labor to draw water. With the advent of electricity, electrical motors started doing this job. So the different water sources were then connected to an electrical motor. This motor, when it ran, it pulled water from any of these water sources and started dumping them into the network of channels. One big advantage with this is that you don't need to have a huge well anymore. This can work quite well with just a tube well. Now a tube well is nothing but a huge pipe that is inserted deep into the ground so that one end of it can go into the water, uh, the ground water and the other end is then connected to the motor which then pulls this water out. So let's do a quick summary of the different methods that we have seen so far. So we looked at pulley system, then we looked at dekli, we looked at chain pump, rahat system where we used bulls, finally we looked at electric motors. In all these cases, once the water was drawn, it was then dumped into a network of channels that then distributed the water evenly to all the plants in the farm. In the next video, let's do a little more deep dive into the step where we distribute the water. We are going to look at a few more methods that can do this more efficiently than a network of channels.